In recent months, sensational headlines have claimed that Yellowstone is splitting apart, fueling a wave of anxiety about a supposed impending supervolcanic disaster. But what is truly happening beneath the world-famous National Park is far more nuanced and scientifically fascinating than the doom-laden narrative suggests. Yellowstone does not exist in geological isolation. To understand why ground movements are occurring and what they signify, scientists emphasize the importance of context. The U.S. Geological Survey notes that the small ground motions recorded by Yellowstone's network of continuously operating GPS stations only make sense against the backdrop of North America's larger tectonic behavior. The North American plate is itself drifting slowly westward while rotating counterclockwise. This motion amounts to mere centimeters per year, yet it is the background velocity of the entire continent. To detect Yellowstone's specific changes, scientists subtract out this baseline continental drift, like hopping onto a moving train to better observe the relative motion of a book sliding along the table in front of you. Without removing that continental motion, the subtle quirks of Yellowstone's deformation would be nearly invisible. When researchers apply this continental reference frame, Yellowstone's patterns come alive. GPS stations northeast of the caldera are moving slightly east, while those southwest of the park are shifting significantly southwest. The implication is clear. The crust across the region is being gently stretched apart. The park is literally being pulled in two directions. This does not mean a gaping chasm is opening or magma is tearing upward. It is the expression of a much larger tectonic phenomenon called basin and range extension. Across much of the western United States, from Wyoming westward toward Nevada and the Sierra Nevada of California, the crust has been thinning and stretching for millions of years. The Hebgen Lake earthquake of 1959, with a magnitude of 7.3, is a stark historical reminder that this stretching produces major normal faults and seismic events, even well outside the caldera itself. This broader context helps reframe what splitting apart actually means. It is not an omen of super eruption, but the ongoing flexure of an already dynamic landscape. The complexity of Yellowstone's tectonic and volcanic interplay is striking when examined in detail. The USGS categorizes Yellowstone's youngest and most active faults into three major groups, those associated with the resurgent domes inside the caldera, those formed directly from the caldera collapses of past super eruptions, and those connected to the broader basin and range crustal stretching. Some of these faults are the circular ring faults where the roof of the magma chamber collapsed following colossal explosions 2.1 million, 1.3 million and 640,000 years ago. Others have developed as the caldera floor inflates and deflates over the millennia, causing small zones of extension and compression. Overlaying it all are the regional forces that have been stretching western North America for over 15 million years. The result is a patchwork of fractures and faults that reveal Yellowstone's dynamic geologic life story. When the media claim Yellowstone is splitting, they collapse all these subtle and overlapping processes into a single dramatic narrative. But the reality is a symphony of different geologic mechanisms acting on different timescales. Yellowstone's volcanic roots lie in a mantle plume or hot spot, a deep-seated source of magma that has left a trail of volcanic scars across the Snake River Plain stretching into Idaho. This plume has been active for at least 16 million years, producing vast basaltic lava flows and, in Yellowstone's case, catastrophic rhyolitic super-eruptions. The three known Yellowstone super-eruptions produced calderas tens of kilometers wide and blanketed half of North America with ash. The last major caldera-forming eruption 640,000 years ago spread an ashfall covering about 7,500 square kilometers, with traces detected as far as Iowa and in ocean cores in the Pacific. Between these caldera events, dozens of smaller but still significant rhyolitic lava flows poured across the landscape, and even more minor hydrothermal explosions and geyser eruptions occurred. For the past 640,000 years since the last super-eruption, Yellowstone's behavior has been relatively tame, characterized by hydrothermal activity and lava flows rather than massive explosions. 
The average interval between Yellowstone's last three major eruptions is about 725,000 years, but scientists caution strongly that such a simple average is not predictive. Three points in a sequence do not define a schedule. The USGS points out that while more time has passed since the last eruption than between some earlier ones, this does not imply an overdue eruption. Statistically and geologically, Yellowstone could go another few thousand or tens of thousands of years or even hundreds of thousands before producing another event of similar scale, if it ever does at all. A major reason for this uncertainty is the current state of Yellowstone's magmatic system. Modern seismic imaging has given scientists an unprecedented look at the magma chambers beneath the park. Beneath Yellowstone lie two connected but distinct magma reservoirs, an upper chamber at about 5 to 15 kilometres depth, and a lower reservoir extending roughly from 20 to 45 kilometres. Together, these zones of partially molten rock are immense in volume, measured in thousands of cubic kilometres, yet their actual melt content is surprisingly low. The upper chamber is estimated to be only about 9% molten, while the deeper reservoir contains only a few percent melt. To put this into perspective, of the approximately 4,000 cubic kilometres of rock imaged under Yellowstone, only about one quarter of a Grand Canyon's worth is actually liquid magma. The rest is mostly solidified crystalline mush, hot rock with pockets of melt. This is a crucial point. Contrary to popular imagery of vast underground magma lakes ready to explode, Yellowstone's magmatic body is far from being a giant cauldron of liquid. A mushy, partially molten system with low melt fractions is unlikely to produce a sudden, unprovoked eruption. Even more intriguing is recent research suggesting Yellowstone's magma chamber has self-regulating mechanisms. A 2025 study led by Rice University scientists identified a shallow magma layer about four kilometres beneath the surface acting as a cap. This lid accumulates heat and gas, but also steadily bleeds off pressure through the hydrothermal system and small seismic and eruptive events. In other words, the system breathes, releasing enough energy over time that catastrophic overpressure is less likely to accumulate suddenly. The live science report on this research quotes scientists explaining that this magma cap traps heat and gas but vents steadily, preventing uncontrolled buildup. This finding provides a more nuanced understanding of Yellowstone's risk profile. The system is active and dynamic, not extinct but also not poised like a time bomb. What about the probability of a super eruption? Using geological records and probabilistic models, scientists estimate the annual chance of such an event at around 0.00014%, roughly 1 in 700,000 per year. That is far below the eruptive frequency of smaller volcanoes worldwide and should reassure those concerned about apocalyptic scenarios. The USGS explicitly states that Yellowstone is not overdue. The volcano's current activity poses far greater risk from localised hazards such as hydrothermal explosions, earthquakes and small lava flows than from any civilization-ending blast. The worst plausible hydrothermal explosions could excavate craters a few hundred metres wide and spew rock and boiling water across the immediate area. Devastating if you are in its path, but insignificant on a continental scale. Super eruptions require very specific and rare conditions that Yellowstone currently does not meet. To truly grasp the forces shaping Yellowstone, it is essential to examine how scientists distinguish between tectonic and magmatic signals in the data. GPS receivers track motion on the scale of millimetres per year, an almost imperceptible creep to the human eye, yet highly meaningful in geophysics. The network of the Americas stations around Yellowstone records slight horizontal extension as well as vertical oscillations with the caldera floor periodically inflating and deflating by a few centimetres over periods of years to decades. When these movements are compared with regional reference frames, researchers can isolate caldera-specific signals from the general tectonic background. For example, an inflation episode in the early 2000s saw uplift of several centimetres over a few years, likely caused by magma or hydrothermal fluids intruding into the shallow crust. These phases of inflation later slowed or reversed into subsidence without producing eruptions. 
They demonstrate that Yellowstone breathes over time through internal fluid motion and pressure changes without requiring catastrophic outcomes. Seismic monitoring complements this ground motion data. Yellowstone experiences thousands of earthquakes annually, though the vast majority are tiny, less than magnitude 2, and imperceptible to humans. These earthquakes cluster in swarms, often interpreted as movements of hydrothermal fluids rather than magma. Scientists distinguish tectonic quakes, which occur due to brittle fault movement from regional stresses, from magmatic quakes, which reflect fluid migration. High-precision seismology, including recent studies published in journals like Geophysical Research Letters, shows that even the swarms that grab media attention rarely involve melt movement. The last notable tectonic earthquake outside the caldera was the Hebgen Lake event of 1959, as mentioned earlier. Since then, Yellowstone's largest quakes have been moderate. None have provided evidence that magma is actively rising toward the surface on a dangerous scale. The magmatic system's structure is also increasingly well imaged, thanks to seismic tomography and magnetotelluric studies. Recent research led by the University of Utah and other institutions has illuminated how partially molten regions are interconnected across different depths. The shallow reservoir sits about three to nine miles deep while the deeper reservoir extends to roughly 12 to 28 miles, each containing different melt fractions and compositions. Crucially, the lower zone has more basaltic magma, while the upper chamber contains evolved rhyolitic magma linked to past explosive eruptions. For a future supereruption to occur, large volumes of rhyolite must accumulate and become sufficiently liquid and gas-rich to fragment explosively. At present, the melt content and distribution do not meet those conditions. Hydrothermal activity at the surface is another important indicator of Yellowstone's inner workings. The park hosts over half of the world's active geysers, along with countless hot springs, fumaroles and mud pots. This hydrothermal circulation is a safety valve, releasing heat and volatiles from the deeper system. It is also hazardous on a local scale. Hydrothermal explosions have created craters hundreds of metres wide in the past few thousand years. The Mary Bay explosion, for instance, about 13,000 years ago, excavated a massive crater in Yellowstone Lake. Though devastating locally, these blasts pale compared to caldera-forming events. USGS hazard assessments highlight these hydrothermal explosions as well as moderate earthquakes and lava flows as the most credible near-term threats to visitors and infrastructure. Beyond Yellowstone itself, the regional tectonics reveal why the area is stretching. The Basin and Range province west of Yellowstone is characterized by alternating ranges and valleys formed by normal faulting due to crustal extension. This process began about 15 million years ago and continues today driven by complex interactions between the Pacific and North American plates and the dynamics of the underlying mantle. Yellowstone sits at the northeastern edge of this extensional province, so the splitting apart observed is part of this broader geodynamic story. It is not a unique harbinger of doom, but rather one facet of the ongoing evolution of Western North America. Speculative scenarios for Yellowstone's future must remain grounded in science. While the probability of a supereruption is extraordinarily low on human timescales, scientists do not rule it out over geologic timescales. A more plausible eruption scenario in the coming tens of thousands of years would be a smaller rhyolitic lava flow or hydrothermal explosion. These could still be regionally significant, damaging infrastructure and requiring evacuations, but would not destroy civilization. If a larger eruption were to happen, it would likely be preceded by clear warning signs, substantial and sustained uplift, intense earthquake swarms of increasing magnitude, gas emissions of specific compositions, and perhaps visible changes in hydrothermal features. None of these precursors are occurring at present. Technological advances continue to improve our ability to monitor Yellowstone. The network of the America's GPS system, INSAR satellites, dense seismic arrays and geochemical monitoring provide a detailed multidimensional picture of the subsurface.
Studies in 2023 and 2024 using satellite radar interferometry revealed subtle seasonal inflation and deflation patterns linked to snowmelt and groundwater variations, further underscoring that not all deformation is magmatic. Even the concept of reference frames in geophysics underscores how careful scientists must be to interpret motions correctly. By analysing Yellowstone in a stable continental frame of reference, researchers filter out the background motion of the North American plate, yielding a truer picture of local processes. Expert opinions further temper alarmist narratives. Michael Poland, the scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, repeatedly emphasises that while Yellowstone is an active volcano, there is no evidence of an impending catastrophic eruption. Peer-reviewed research published in Science and Nature Geoscience supports the idea that supereruptions are rare, complex events requiring very specific conditions. Even when large eruptions happen elsewhere, such as the eruption of Tambora in 1815 or Pinatubo in 1991, they are orders of magnitude smaller than Yellowstone's ancient blasts. Those eruptions also had clear precursory warning signs over months to years. Yellowstone's current activity is far below such levels. It is worth considering that even if a super-eruption eventually occurs in tens or hundreds of thousands of years, humanity's technology, monitoring and preparedness could look radically different by then. Rather than fear, the focus should remain on understanding and monitoring, as well as appreciating Yellowstone's geological wonders and hazards realistically. The park is a living laboratory, teaching scientists about mantle plumes, hydrothermal circulation and crustal deformation. In a nutshell, Yellowstone is indeed stretching, but not in the apocalyptic sense portrayed in some headlines. It is an active geologic system shaped by deep mantle heat, tectonic stretching, hydrothermal circulation and ancient volcanic history. The crustal splitting is a slow, millimetre-scale process linked to regional tectonics and magmatic dynamics, not a sudden rift portending catastrophe. Understanding these processes helps demystify Yellowstone and provides a more rational perspective on volcanic hazards. Continued scientific vigilance, transparent communication and public education are the keys to living safely with such awe-inspiring natural phenomena. If you found this deep dive valuable, be sure to like, share and subscribe so more people can learn the truth behind the headlines and explore the fascinating science shaping our planet. If you found this deep dive valuable, be sure to like, share and subscribe so more people can learn the truth behind the headlines and explore the fascinating science shaping our planet. Thank you for watching.